Hey guys, this is the Cold Steel Range Boss. As with most of my Cold Steel folders, I bought this one out of sheer curiosity. In this case, maybe even more so because I already have the Cold Steel Broken Skull. I've talked about this one in another video. The Range Boss, in my opinion, is a more budget-friendly version of uh, the Cold Steel Broken Skull. I saw a picture of it online and I got the idea in my head that the handle of the Range Boss would be slightly thicker than the one on the cold steel broken skull i don't know if you can tell it is by 0.5 millimeters it's not something that i can tell just by looking at them and i can feel the difference in my hand but i measured them and yeah 0.5 millimeters but like i said this is a more budget-friendly version of this knife the design is almost the same but there are differences this is an older version, so the steel used is CTS XHP. I'm not sure if Cold Steel makes the Broken Skull model anymore. If they do, they probably use S35VN and they have G10 handle scales on it with no metal liners. This one uses the more budget-friendly 4034SS, has GFN handle scales, and it has partial liners. The liners come up to half the scale I would say maybe a, a bit less than that I don't know if you can see inside it but yeah they are they are there there's a weight difference this one weighs about 87 grams and this one 93 <laughs> I said this is an excellent uh, hiking knife because it offers you a lot of cutting edge length and the weight is fairly reduced plus it sits very well in the pocket the same is true with this one, even if you're going to count the six grams as extra weight. First thing I did to this knife was sand the scales underneath the pocket clip. These GFN handle scales have this bumpy texture to them. In the beginning, it was fairly aggressive. And I noticed, yeah, this is going to be a problem. If I'm going to carry this, it's going to rip my pockets. So that was the first thing I sanded underneath the pocket clip. The next thing I did was sharpen it. Uh, and people on YouTube said that 4034SS is about 8CR13 MOV-ish. Uh, maybe less, maybe more. But I, I would have agreed with them back then because it sharpened up quite easily to a very, very good edge. And I could keep that edge sharp simply by stropping it. Now later, after I worked with it a couple of times, I realized when it came to softer materials, cardboard around the house and out here, green softer woods, I really didn't have any issues. But as soon as I picked up something harder that requires more force, you to squeeze the knife more in your hand, I realized the texture did bother me. So. What I did was drop the edge angle to about 15 degrees per side and smoothen out the handle scales and of course also the inside. I know this from the Finn Wolf where I also uh, rounded off the corners on the inside and now it's very comfortable. This one, however, has more material to it. It's a bit chubbier, feels much more stable in hand. Doesn't need metal liners. This one does and they put them in here which I think was a great idea. I feel like there was a lot of thought put into the Broken Skull model. And I think the same came into this one. Personally, I cannot tell uh, the difference between a knife that doesn't have uh, metal liners from Cold Steel and other flow-through designs which have a standoff and have full metal liners. They flex about the same. And that means you have to really pay attention when you're cutting something to say, yeah, I can feel myself squeezing the handle. I honestly can't. Now, in the case of uh, the Range Boss, when I work with it, I feel that I am actually squeezing the handle. Once again, if I pay attention to it. But the knife does not flex. It has metal liners built very solidly i like that i prefer a triad lock over any back lock knife i've showed this with my 
Enduro the first time years and years ago. When you're cutting something using a normal backlock knife, pressing into materials, the blade will press on the backlock, lifting the backlock a bit in your hand. I don't know if you can see it, but that you can feel in here. With the triad lock, that doesn't happen because everything is, all the pressure is taken over by this small pin, so the back lock doesn't move. They, they don't use a boy dent, and yet in any hand position, normal hand position, I did not feel myself accidentally depressing uh, the back lock. One thing that I like about the Range Boss more than the Broken Skull, it's not a problem with this one by any means, but this one has a less stiff back lock. Uh, same with the Broken Skull, when I depress the back lock, the blade falls shut. But here I need a bit more pressure. Now, I can flick out the cold steel broken skull, especially if I give it some wrist action. If I don't, sometimes it will stick halfway there, like this. But with some wrist action, no issues. With this one, I don't. I don't need that wrist action. Now, it has a less stiff back lock, and yet, like I said, in any hand position, normal hand position, I don't feel it move or my hand depressing it even if it doesn't have a boy dent. Of course, I can purposely do this. I can't do that with the Cold Steel American Lama. That one's just notoriously stiff, at least my model is, and I like that. But this is one thing that I did like with the Range Boss. It is more fidget friendly, you can call it. This is the one Cold Steel for me that is more fidget friendly. To be honest, I hardly ever flick it out. I do this. It's just a lot of fun. If you reduce the edge angle, there are certain advantages. You see, this lower range budget models use budget friendly steel, 4034 SS. Now as it stands, this one is about 15 degrees per side. When I got to removing that much material from the edge, I noticed it is way more abrasion resistant than, let's say, 8CR13 MOV. I didn't dislike that fact. I've used this knife, I've had it for about five months maybe, four or five months. I've used it, I didn't EDC it, I used it around the house, around here. And I could always drop it back to raise a sharp. Budget steels usually do that, they're a bit softer. And I would say, therefore, the average knife user, the guy who just has a knife with him because he thinks he might need a knife and he needs to cut certain things, cardboard, plastics, his food in a lunch break, and he wants to keep it sharp. You can keep budget steels sharper by using any sharpening stone, almost any sharpening stone, or as it is the case with this one, simply stropping it on a leather strop with stropping compound, that's fairly easy. After six, seven, eight, ten, twelve months, you might need to actually put it on a stone to get that very keen, very hair shaving sharp edge. But you can still keep this sharp merely by stropping it. In my opinion, that is a huge advantage. And softer steels, more budget friendly steels, will tend to bend before they chip, roll the edge. I think that is preferable. I would rather straighten out a small roll than take out a chip. So I have nothing against budget-friendly steels. 8CR 13 MOV, if it's heat treated very well, it does an excellent job. And for the average knife user, it's fantastic. There are some people who actually need to use their knives a lot in a day, one, two hours a day. Those people might need something more special. For me, this is okay. Uh, I don't mind this. I have been working with this and I don't mind it. Now, would I want something a bit better? Yes, Cold Steel nowadays uses uh, Aus 10A and I think that one's pretty great. I have three knives with uh, their Aus 10A. More abrasion resistant than this one, holds an edge 
very well and it is what you would call a working a good working steel i've cut um, with my air light i've cut through cables i've cut yes it did take some damage but it was fairly easily restored back and i could keep it sharp simply by stropping it so that too is a budget friendly steel but it has its advantages this is one of the things that i do like about certain folders like this most cold steels i think are made to be working folders maybe not as fidget friendly maybe not as well fancy but they do get the job done i've had the fin wolf for quite some time i like to use it it has replaced my mora 510 in my backpack and this one i also like to take with me out here in the uh i also come out here uh, with my dog for a walk and I'll put this in my pocket weighs next to nothing carries very well I like it now one thing which I liked about the broken skull and I like about this one is the nice distal taper for those of you who don't know a distal taper is when the blade thends out from the bottom here towards the tip this, hel this helps you control the blade uh, when you're making feather sticks. The most control you're gonna have is when you're working close to your hand. That's why some people like to choke up on the blade so they have more control. And here, yeah, you have a lot of control, but moving away from your hand, and I'm just gonna hold it in a normal position, working with the tip, if you have a good distal taper on a blade, you will have maybe not the same amount of control, but a lot of control. It will help you. A good distal taper is the one on the Endura. I've always liked this knife and you can see it. Very well made, it helps you. Now, the Finn Wolf is, uh, in my opinion, a woodworking knife. It has this two bevel ground blade, a Scandi ground blade, and decent enough edge angle about 12 degrees per side and if you want to carve your feather sticks you know to light them on a stick near your hand you can exert a lot of control especially if you do it like me and i remove the thumb stud because it would get in the way right here uh, you can actually even if the piece of wood is not supported get fine wood shavings now, when I move towards the tip, because of the shape of the blade and the fact that it doesn't have a distal taper, I have control because of the small edge angle, but I find it a bit harder to control than the Range Boss, which is full flat grind, ground and it has a nice distal taper. Even if the distance is much larger, I find this one a bit easier to control. Not sure if you can pick it up, but even unsupported, I can still work with the tip. Because of cold steel, I've, I've gotten to like the clip point design blade. Uh, I find it very practical. Now, of course, a draw point blade will be more resistant, uh, but with anything you're gonna need a blade like this for, I don't think with a normal use, you can actually break the tip. The advantages it offers is, once again, control. I can put this just about anywhere on a stick, and I'm holding the stick, I'm not putting it down on a piece of wood where I would have even more control, but just here, stick it in, and maybe make a hole. Clip point blades are, in my nowadays opinion, uh, better for work than, than draw point blades. Although I like the look of a good draw point blade much more than I <laughs> than the best looking uh, clip point blade. But for work, I think it's awesome. I think a lot of thought went to the, into the Broken Skull model and this one. I see very few people actually using theirs. And uh, I think it's a shame. I think it's a great model. The price is decent. Uh, it's about the same price as a uh, Spyderco Bird Cara Cara in that region. And I think the steel is slightly better. Now, the Cara Cara is a great model. I personally think, except for the, the steel and the texture on the handle scales, the Cara Cara 
is a better design than the Endura. It has that nice, uh, that nice finger choil, plus it has a thinner stock, uh, which makes it a much better slicer as it comes. All you need to do is drop the edge angle and it's fantastic. Maybe I'll talk about that in another video. So yeah, these were my thoughts on uh, the Range Boss. This is what I could tell you by how much I've worked with it. I have not carried this as an EDC. However, I did carry the Broken Skull. But I think there are certain advantages to, a, like I said, a mid-range budget folder like this. Guys, I hope uh, I told you something that maybe you didn't hear in other places. I hope you enjoy the video. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. Comment down below if you have any questions or comments. And I wish you all a great day.